you are welcome to a great moment in destiny. God is about to speak directly to you. And the message coming right up is crafted by heaven, not just to challenge you, but to align your destiny. As you embrace divine instruction, expect that God's word is bringing about revival, healing, restoration, and transformation to your entire life. With faith in your heart and great expectation, join me and receive God's word through his choice vessel, Good Heart Obi Ekweme. God, oh, I never see your kind of oh. This kind God, oh, blessed be this this kind God, God, oh, this kind God, the drum of the testimonies. I never see your time, oh, this kind God. your voice, your hand, and bless him for two, three minutes. Give him the glory. We are in the Lord's sanctuary. Not the mortuary. Only the living can praise him. Only the living have dreams and aspirations. To he that is joined to all living, there is hope. A living dog is better than a dead lion. Can you celebrate him? He's doing what he knows to do best. To bless. To preserve. To keep. To answer prayers. Come on, Roger. Give him praise. Give him praise. Not unto us, but unto you, O oh God. It belongs a praise. Wow. Wow. Can you thank you for being the wall of fire round about this house and the glory in our midst? There's one watching over us. His name is Jesus. Ah, Sakapala Dabodabodagades. We'll never see your time. It's none beside you. None beside. You. Wow. Koto Palanda. Father Lord, I am grateful. Kept us from sorrow, from tears. We're thankful. As a family, we're thankful. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, before we read our text this beautiful morning in John 15, I want you to testify because we are all testament of his goodness to seven people around you and tell them, I'm glad I'm still standing in the game of life. Glad I'm still standing in the game of life. Wow. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, 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 oh my soul. <laughs> I worship you.
to meet with me to John 15 verses 4 to 8 John 15 4 to 8 shall we read together from the King James Version abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Hearing is my father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Verse number seven, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then he shall go on to ask me what you will, what you desire, and it shall be done unto you. The Passion Translation says, But if you live in life union with me, and if my words live powerfully within you, then you can ask whatever you desire, and it will be done. That means the condition to be able to ask the Lord and receive a certain definite answer of your desire is for the words of God to abide in you. For an assignment this morning, the place of the word in securing answered prayers. The place of the word of God in securing answered prayers. Shall we entreat our Father again? in a brief word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we lift our hearts and our voices to thank you for the gift of life, for the awesome privilege to gather again under this open heavens. We're so grateful you've drawn us from all walks of life. You said when we lift you up, you draw all men to yourself. I beseech you again to take a coal of fire from the altar of heaven. Anoint the lips and the tongues of clay of this seven son of yours that today I will come to your people, declaring thus saith the Lord. Help me to go beyond my study, contemplation and memory to speak express your word. Move all under the sound of my voice in this room and the multitudes long on across the nations from where we are to the place you've reserved for us in the place called destiny. We vow us always to give you alone the praise, the glory and the honor. In Jesus' wondrous name we have prayed. Somebody shout a big amen. You may please be still very comfortably in God's wonderful presence. I would like to believe that most of us, if not all, have been a part of the exercise in the past 14 days of engaging in the place of watching and prayers, what we call birth and glory in the womb of prayer. Today we'd like to look at some principles of prayer that guarantees an effective prayer life. The intent, I believe, of the 21 days fast is not to fast and pray for 21 days and then have our prayer life uh, nosedive to where it was before. But I believe it is the Lord's intention for these days to serve as a catalyst to awaken, to revive, to resuscitate many of our prayer altars and for it to go from grace to grace and glory to glory. It was a particular uh, a man that was brought to the disciples, uh, the father brought his child to the disciples and they were not able to heal uh, this particular person. And they brought the same person to Jesus and the Lord healed him 
And the disciples asked, Master, well, why were we not able to heal this particular disciple, this particular person that came to us? Well, he first of all mentioned about their unbelief and their doubt, but he also said something. He said, he said this kind, this kind will not go out except by prayer and by fasting. There is a this kind. And I find from time to time in our journey here on the earth, we, we bump into certain these kinds of challenges and tests that will only move at the instance of the combination of both effective prayer added and aided with fasting. I've said before, I say again, you can pray without fasting effectively, but you can't really fast without praying effectively. Because what your fast does, for all intent and purposes, out, cannot go on except by prayer and by fasting. And I want you to believe God that in this season of waiting and watching upon the Lord as you've engaged this dual combination of prayer and fasting, that there is really no mountain in your life that will not move. Uh, that perhaps where things that crawled over from last year to this year, you're wondering, I thought this thing died and was buried in 2019, but I want to tell you, if really you engage this double combination of prayer and fasting, that mountain will be leveled. I, I want you to consider the very most difficult, most challenging, most tempestuous situation you're facing right now and tell yourself, this will move in the next, first, next few days as I continue in this journey of prayer and fasting. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Want to remind you also that prayer is not just an instrument for us to bang the door of heaven and, and petition and ask and inquire for God to meet our needs while prayer does change things, will change things. But I think more importantly is that prayer will change you. Prayer will not leave you the same way as you are. And one of the greatest benefits and blessings of prayer is not just uh, getting an answer to your, to your prayers, but also it leaves you a transformed person. It was after eight days that Jesus took his disciples, uh, James, uh, Peter, James, and John, to the mountain to pray in, in Luke 9, 28 and 29. Bible says, and it came to pass about an eight days after these saints, he took Peter and John and James and went up into the mountain to pray. He had a very prayerful lifestyle. He would wake up early hours of the morning before the day broke to commune with his father. Mark 1, 35, 34. He will, he will sleep sometimes all night in the place of prayer. And you look at Matthew, Mark, look at John. Jesus had a very, very busy itinerary in his ministry. But the question was, how come he was so busy he found time to pray? Somebody once said that I am so busy, or better still, my day schedule is so busy that I need to pray. So the more reason why your schedule is busy, you need to pray. Because prayer puts in perspective of what is important, what ought to be done, what ought to be priority. So Jesus had a very, very robust if to prayer life. As a matter of fact, the disciples saw that, that perhaps, not perhaps, they saw that his teaching ministry had the power they saw. They saw the miracles, the signs and wonders. Because they realized if we caught this thing about the master's life, then every other thing we see happen in his life will begin to happen in our life. So we see here, Luke 9, 28, and it came to pass about eight days after these saints, he took Peter and John and James and went up to a mountain to pray. Hear this. And as he prayed, not before, not after, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. As he prayed, he was transformed. As he prayed, he was changed. In a like manner also, as you pray effectively, answers come to your prayer request, but also your life is being changed and being transformed. You may not know it, but over the past few days of waiting and watching just the simplicity of your prayers at 5 a.m., at the 12 noon watch, at our corporate prayer meetings, listen, there have been great transformation within you that even you may not know the extent. Why? The Bible declares that whilst we with open face beholding as in the mirror of the word of the Lord, we are being changed from glory to glory to glory. And I want to declare to you prophetically that the 21 days of waiting, watching, and praying will not leave you the same way as you enter the 21 days. Uh, your amen sounds very questionable. 
You see, Daniel began to pray, uh, uh, and for 21 days, there was, there was what seemed to be a hijack in the realm of the spirit. Not that the answer wasn't delivered, it was released the day that Daniel prayed, but there was a war in the heavenlies until the 21st day that he took custody of the answer of the prayers. I, I want to believe that you are going to take certain results and certain answers at the end of these days of waiting and why? We're not praying religiously. We're not praying because others are praying. No, we're praying because we're giving God the first fruit of the days of the year. According to the law of first fruit, if the first is blessed, the rest is also blessed. So it is natural or proper to offer up God the first few days to him in the year. Three weeks, not that much. A month, not that much. So that you secure in the place of prayer the remaining days of the year. Somebody shout a big, big amen. amen. I see you transformed. I see you change. I see you translated at the end of this 21 day exercise. Hallelujah. It was said that after 40 days of fasting and prayer, the Jesus was tempted by the enemy. He said he came out by the power of the Holy Ghost and his fame was noise abroad. There was an announcement of his ministry after those days of waiting and prayer. I want to declare over somebody that at the 21 days, there shall be an announcement of your God-ordained destiny. Amen. That means certain doors, perhaps they were shut hitherto, they're going to swing wide open at the instance of your appearing. Listen, the, the, the Lord has not asked the sons of Jacob to seek him in vain. He said, call unto me and I will answer and show you great and mighty things that you know not of. There ought to be an assurance in the place of prayer that prayer is not guesswork. It's not fumbling and wumbling. You're not trying to use one key for another door. No, you can pray and know he heard you. You can pray and know he answered you. Somebody said, I believe. believe. Beloved, prayer is something that is commonly done as a practice amongst many religions. There is something about prayer that is part of the practice of many religions and traditions of the world today. But it's important for us to uh, bring about a distinction between the prayers of the saints and all other prayers. The prayers of the saints and all other prayers. And that's why I want to take some time today to look at the guiding, some of them, of the guiding principles that guarantees answered prayers. Because when you pray, your motive and your focus is not just to pray for the sake of praying. You must pray with the desire and the intention to gain answers to prayer. Otherwise, prayer become a futile exercise, become frustrated. You gyrate, sweat, get tired, but when there are no answers, you become frustrated. One of the blessings that encourage you to pray again is that you prayed and you got the answer. Hello, somebody? So answers to the prayers prayed encourage you to go back to your prayer closet, pray again. You know that your God is a prayer answering God. Beloved, our God is a God whose ears are attentive to the cries of the just and the saint and the right. He's a prayer answering God. Our God is a covenant making God, covenant keeping God. And he, he will always keep to the side of his covenant. But the question is, do we keep to our side of the covenant? Do we know the principles that undergird and govern the prayer? Sincerity in prayer is good, but not enough. It's good to pray sincerely, but when you pray sincerely without knowing how to pray, without knowing the principle of prayer, you could be frustrated though your prayer is sincere or you are a sincere person. So understanding is key to answered prayers. Beloved, Prayer must not be seen as something that has to do with the lock. Will it work? I pray 10 prayer points. I receive answer to five. Not bad. Come see, come sir. I got seven out of 10. No, 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 no. We can, as believers, know that we're hitting the bull's eye when we pray. When we know the principles of prayer, you can effectively have the confidence that my prayer got heaven's attention and my prayer was answered. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Prayer is a very, very essential part of the well-being of the believer. It's oftentimes said that the word of God is to your spirit man 
as what food is to your physical body. Matthew 4, 4, in the words of Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. So it is by the word that we live. Outside the word, we don't live. It's possible to be breathing in and out, walking, talking, but not really living. If you live outside the word, you're not really living. You may be alive, but not living. What guarantees you to live is that you are eating the word on a constant and a consistent basis. But also, prayer is likened to what the breath of breathing in and out is to your human body. So, in the place of the word, we are strengthened, we are energized. But in the place of prayer, we also breathe in the fresh air of heaven and we exchange our own air. So, we are refreshed as we pray. So, prayer is renewing. Prayer is revitalizing. Prayer is strengthening for the life of a saint. Prayer brings a certain kind of refreshing and revitalization to our souls. The Bible says that we are to cast our cares upon him for he cares for us. So we say, why worry when you can pray? The Bible declares, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanks even make your request known unto God. Praise God. Philippians 4 verse 6. So we, 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 ought to, we, ought to, we ought to ventilate our hearts from the cares and the concerns by laying them at the feet of Jesus. So prayer is refreshing. You cast your burdens. Because in the first place, there are certain burdens. If I no burden, what are you designed to carry? You are not designed to carry any burden. You are not designed to carry any burden. You are not designed to carry any burden. You have a burden bearer. And his name is Jesus. So when you attempt to bear burdens by your own, it, it, it weighs you down, brings anxiety, brings fear, and sometimes leads to disease and infirmity. So Jesus in teaching said, hey, don't bear the burden. Cast it upon me. I'm your burden bearer. He said in Matthew, Matthew 11, 28, uh, come unto me. It's an invitation. Come unto me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will what? Give you rest. So he has rest for the heavy laden. So your burdens ought not to be carried by you. Place it at the feet of the master. So why worry? Why burdened when you can pray? You see, that is the advantage of people who have learned to pray consistently. Their cares are constantly cast upon the Lord. Right? But those who don't pray, they, they, they become overwhelmed by the things they're dealing with. Listen, in, in this life, as Jesus said in John 16, 33, that in me you have peace, but in the world you have tribulation. John 16, 33, in me you find peace, but in the world you have tribulation, but I have overcome the world. Beloved, as long as we are in this world, there are certain things we face on a day-to-day -day basis. Hallelujah. But until we learn not just to be in the world, but to have the consciousness that we are of Christ, of him, though we are in the world, not of the world, we will end up carrying our burdens. But when you have the consciousness that you are living in the world, but not of the world, then you can walk in the peace that God has for you. Praise the Lord somebody. Praise the Lord somebody. So you begin to find that a certain kind of tiredness, Lethargy, slothfulness, weakness, lack of joy, lack of excitement for living, set into a heart that is not praying consistently and constantly. Beloved, whenever you find yourself in that place where it looks like the excitement and the adventure of being a child of God is gradually being knocked off you, check two areas of your life. Check two areas. Number one, the area of your word level. What is your word diet like? Is there a drop in your word diet? Number two, check your prayer life. What is the vibrancy? What is the tenacity? What is the passion in your prayer life? So the word and prayer are two aspects. Please listen. There are two aspects. The enemy will seek to first of all strike before any other area. His main aim is not to steal your house, your car, your shoes, or whatever it is. His main aim is to steal your connection to the word and your connection to prayer. Why? If he achieves that, 
you are weakened every other thing else can fall in place so his attack primarily is in your word life and your prayer life so we must guard these areas of our lives believers very very jealously is somebody here this morning is somebody here? you see because when your word and prayer life god is down it, it means the enemy can have certain access to certain areas of a life but if the god is up no matter what the enemy throws at you it is warded off you know some days ago within the week the lord was just share with me again on isaiah 5 4 17 and i began to see some new light there it says there is no weapon formed fashioned against you that shall prosper huh every tongue that rises against you in judgment thou shalt condemn so this is the heritage of the servant of the lord and their righteousness is of me said the lord and it, it, it dawned on me that it never said <laughs> that no weapon will be formed against you it only said that though the weapons are formed they are fashioned against you they will not have their desired effect they will not prosper though they are released in your direction though you face what others may face but as a child of god as a righteous those things sent in your direction would not have the desired effect and said you have the power the authority with your mouth to pull down to cast to negate those things so the point is tests are common to human living right but for the saint who know their god ordained rights and privileges tests are to be converted for testimonies as many as their tests beloved their testimonies so we don't run from test no we confront tests, we conquer tests, and they become testimonies. We, we delight in people who share testimonies, but those testimonies were a result of people who were tested in one area of their lives. So as many as they are tests, they are testimonies. The weapons may be fashioned, they may be thrown at you, but by the shield of faith, you are to quench every fiery dart of the enemy. They won't have their desired effect. So no matter what weapon the enemy may think it will release against you in this year 2010 2020 beyond they will not have their desired effect they will be extinguished they will be quenched the fury the fury that of the enemy maybe towards your health your marriage your finance your career your business your ministry it will not have the desired effect it will be dead on arrival in the name of the lord jesus christ somebody shout a big amen Spiritual battles are real, but victories are also real. Hallelujah. 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 That's why the Bible encourages us in 2 Corinthians 2 14. Now thanks be unto God. I love that scripture. Who always causes us to triumph. Where? In Christ Jesus. Can we declare that? Now thanks be unto God. Who always causes us to triumph where in Christ once again now thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph where in Christ how many times always hallelujah there's victory always for you there's victory always for you there is victory always for you always and always hallelujah Beloved, one of the things our persons, the enemy dreads is a man or a woman who is filled with the word of God and a man and a woman of prayer. It's a dread to the enemy. A real dread. And as I said earlier, the enemy's ploy is to attempt to break our focus in these two areas. Story was told in Luke 10, you know the story about Martha and Mary, how Jesus came into the house of Martha and Martha welcomed Jesus was very very busy to entertain him uh, look, looked after him as best as she knew how to good food good um, uh, um, dining manners and etiquette and all of that stuff but 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 mary the sister sat at the feet of jesus and that seemed to be something lazy that she was doing uh, and martha began to complain and and, and ask jesus master master uh, why is it that that mary will not come to help me to serve and Jesus said to her, I said, Martha, 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 Martha. 
Thou art encumbered. Thou art busy. Thou art troubled with much seven. And said that you are careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Not two things. Not many things. One thing is needful. Roger, how? One thing. It says, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. So, this one thing is a choice we make. A choice we make. Because it's not enough to be active and busy for the Lord. If you are active and busy, but not productive or resourceful, your activity is in vain. So whilst there is a place to serve God, and there are blessings of service. But you see, service should not precede worship. Service should come as, as an overflow of your worship or your word encounter. Hello somebody? We find strength at the feet of Jesus to serve him. Hello somebody? We find strength to walk the way he's called us to walk at the place of the word. So the service is not wrong, but it's the honor and the prioritization of service over the word. So the word must be honored and respected. When the word is preached in this house, everything should shut down. Because the main thing is happening. It is through the instrumentality of the word that lives are changed. Bodies are healed. Minds are transformed and renewed through the word. But the enemy will want to bring about tra tra uh, uh, interference, distractions, and make you feel, well, it's not that. It, no, that is the important thing you came for. The word. Because contained in the word is spirit and life. There is nothing else you're looking for that is not found in the word. Is the main thing. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. And the thing about the word of the Lord is, when the word is entering your spirit, man, you sometimes don't know the extent of effect or impact it has on you immediately. Why? It is spirit and life. But if you give your ear continually to the word of God, you realize a week, one month, two months, three months, certain things have changed in your life. Taste buds are changing. Patterns and habits that are changing. The things you once loved, you can't find them anymore. Hey, what was it? What? Because the word is both spirit and life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. So the Bible says we must attend to the word. You know the word? Attend. It's like a waiter waiting upon somebody on a particular mission. Either on the plane, on board, or wherever it is, a restaurant. So you attend to your client. My son, attend to my word. Proverbs, Proverbs 4.20 Incline your ears to his saints. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. The word must be attended to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes the increase and prosperity can, if care is not taken, be a distraction. We we'll have to keep it in the right perspective. That's what I'm saying. Right? Our God is a God of increase. I will increase you and your children more and more. It is not to increase you. Praise the Lord. Promotion doesn't come from the east, the west, the south. comes from the Lord. He sets down one, elevates another. So he's a God of increase. Hallelujah. No doubt about that. But we have to keep the increase God brings our way in the right perspective. Right? There must always be as a result of the overflow of our walk with the word. And prayer that's what brings the increase <laughs> all right so the increase is is the effect that's right Woo! the increase is not the cause the increase and effect the healing is an effect the promotion is an effect of what of your time with the Lord in prayer and in the word so when the increase comes we mustn't shift our gaze from our time with the Lord to the increase we must stay with what brought the increase in the first place we read in Acts 6 the first century church, the Lord enlarged them, brought about increase. And some of the, uh, uh, I think it's the Greeks, began to complain that, uh, that the Hebrew women were, 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 were not fair in distributing the, their, their proper ration to them at that time. There was a lot of rancor and there was a lot of uh, uh, noise amongst them. And the apostle said, wait a minute, um, whilst what you raise as a concern in the church is very, very important, 
very valid concern to look after the service teams and all of that stuff but i'm paraphrasing now but i sense that there is a trick of the enemy behind the corner it's a trick whilst we'll address the matter right whilst we'll target the need to be met but we'll not leave the primary task ah, yeah, 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 of the word and the prayer and attend to tables we know it is the word and the prayer that brought the increase right if we leave the word and prayer to attend to solving problems that increase brought will engage in problem solving but after a while the increase will stop so we'll put a system in place we'll solve it but we'll create a system diaconates the deacons they are anointed they are watered they are prayed up they will deal with the need but it is reason access for we will give <laughs> ourselves what continually come on Rajik to what to singing, to dancing, to attending weddings, to joining people, to baptizing, to confirming. No, sir. We, the eldership, will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the business of the word. Why? As we continue in these two things, the increase will continue, but there is now a system in place to solve, quote unquote, the problem that increase brings. Listen, it, it would be a big challenge if you showed up in church one particular Sunday and there were 2,000 people outside the door. And I'm telling you, it's not impossible. It's not impossible. But these things that do you have the capacity to handle the increase? Now, if we as eldership, as pastors say, okay, let's solve the matter. Let's get a bigger facility. Let's get involved and leave the word and prayer. The increase that came by the word and by prayer will stop. So we'll not fall for that trick. We'll give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. You know, Jesus said that my house is called the house of prayer for all nations. That means there's something about prayer and the church. It's not a house of music. If music is there, then a house of giving is there. Not a house of preaching is there. But there's something about prayer and the church and our modern day church is trying to make us think we can modernize prayer we can use technology in place of prayer but you see the ark of covenant cannot be born on a modern day cart no they are to be born, it is to be born on the shoulders of sanctified priests, right? The moment David tried to put a, the cart of covenant in, in an ox or modern day cart, the cart rocked. Uzzah was killed. They pushed the cart aside. Why? You can't use modernization to replace what a man sanctified is designed to do. Praise God, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 Can somebody give me seven hallelujahs? Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. James 5.16 A pointer to the fact that God wants us to pray effectively. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Ah, yeah, yeah. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man 
avails much. Look at the amplified version, same scripture. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, your false steps, your offenses, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man, believer, is able to make much, sorry, is able to accomplish much, I beg your pardon, when put into action and made effective by God. It is dynamic and can have tremendous power. We'd like to look at a few things this morning, the minutes we have left. We want to consider what is prayer? And then we'll consider again, how do we secure answers to our prayers? What is prayer? Prayer primarily is a vehicle, means by which we commune with our Heavenly Father. It's a vehicle, a means of communion. The word communion is a slightly deeper word than to communicate. Whilst they are related, one is deeper in thought and meaning. Communion speaks of a heart-to-heart connection. You can achieve communication without possibly achieving communion. Head-to-head knowledge is communication, but a heart-to-heart revelation is communion. So prayer is given us by God to engage in a heart-to-heart dialogue with our Heavenly Father. It's very important. Such an access that we can come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy, find grace, and help in the time of need, in the place of communion. It's a place to increase our intimacy, fellowship. Apostle Paul declared in Philippians 3.10, that I may know him, that I may know him, speaks of deep, intimate knowledge and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Hallelujah. Number two, prayer is a means whereby the saint establishes God's will and purposes on the earth. It's a means to establish his will and his purpose on the earth. Oh yes, God is sovereign. It's all powerful, all knowing, all seeing. But it's designed the heavens and the earth in such a way and manner that he gave man the rulership over the earth. Psalm 115 verse 16. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. So the earth is given to you as a gift to govern in his stead on his behalf. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And our responsibility here on the earth is not to govern the earth based on what we think or how we think it should be governed. No, sir. It is to be able to look to the heavens and say like Jesus, As I see my father work, so I work. Praise God. So the only way we can govern the earth effectively and bring his kingdom to bear is to know the will of his kingdom. We must know the will of his kingdom. And then we enforce the will of his kingdom on the earth. In the teaching of Jesus to the disciples on how to pray, he taught, Matthew 6, 9, After this manner, therefore pray, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it's a divine instrument where we establish the will of God over our lives. For instance, you have some symptoms in your body that tries to tell you it is one ailment or the other. In the place of prayer, you look into the kingdom, you look into the world and see what obtains in the kingdom. What obtains in the kingdom is well-being and soundness. So you take the will of the Father and you establish over your life 
that by the stripes of Jesus Christ I am healed there's no sickness in heaven no disease no sickness around around my environment so it's a means to establish his will and his kingdom number three prayer is a means whereby the saint generates spiritual power it's a very important aspect of prayer that has to do with power very important you probably heard it say before little prayer little power no prayer no power much prayer much power the bible declares in psalm 6 3 verse 3 psalm 6 3 verse 3 we're teaching right say unto god how terrible a thou sorry 6 6 verse 3 sorry 6 6 verse 3 6 6 verse 3 not 6 3 psalm 6 6 verse 3 say unto god how terrible art thou in thy works through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee hallelujah hallelujah the lord said to the disciples for them to tarry in jerusalem until they be endued with power Acts 1 8 and therein after they shall become witnesses in Jerusalem in Judea in Samaria and the uttermost part of the world they needed power to become effective witnesses hallelujah whilst we have been baptized at least a great number of us in this house if not this will be your occasion if you're blood washed but child of God we been baptized with the Holy Ghost but that baptism it's not designed to be a once and an only uh, uh, encounter. You can, you should be rebaptized again, be renewed again, be refreshed again. <laughs> Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Why? There is the working of the Holy Ghost within you, lastly, working out the character of Christ within you, the fruit of the Spirit, but there is a working of the Holy Ghost upon you. His working upon you is to enable you to be effective in serving and doing ministry. So power. We grow in the school of power. As we pray, our power level increases. Jude, only one chapter, verse 20. Jude, one chapter, verse 20. But you, beloved, building up yourselves, on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost next saturday by god's grace we shall engage again in a three-hour challenge of praying in the holy ghost give us an amazing time to build spiritual muscle again times of refreshing times of amazing open heavens times where we know heavens are provoked to release the miraculous and the supernatural as we simply pray building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost so prayer is one means to build spiritual muscle, capacity, and power. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Prayer is a means by which we unlock the treasures of heaven. We unlock the treasures of heaven. Everything is made available. Everything is paid for. Bible declares in 1 Corinthians 6.20 that you are bought with a price. Not will be, you are bought with a price. And that price is a full price. You are therefore to glorify your God in your body, in your spirit, which are Christ's or which are God's. You are bought with a price. You're not available in the market to be bought by the enemy anymore. You are bought, fully paid for. Your health is bought. Your financial well-being is bought. Your marital destiny is bought. Your children, you're trusting God for, they're already bought. They're paid for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're paid for. In other words, Jesus is not going to do anything again concerning it's done what could be done, should be done. It is settled. But the issue now is, man of God, I don't seem to have in my hand, by way of custody, the things you say he's paid for. What's the issue? Ephesians 1 3. You and I are already blessed. No, we'll be blessed. We're blessed with every spiritual blessings. Where in heavenly places where in Christ Jesus somebody said I'm blessed 
So truthfully, as a child of God, you are not on the beggarly side for the blessing. You're already blessed. And the blessings are not indicative of the trappings around you. No, sir. No, sir. The blessing is based on your relationship with Christ. If you're a child of God, you are the blessed of the Lord. Praise the Lord, somebody. So there's a root before the fruit. If there's a root, it's a matter of time for the fruit to show up. And I want to tell you, if you're rooted in him, get ready. The fruit are about to show up. Oh yeah, 2020, the fruit are showing up. People will see, not because you said that the hand of the Lord is upon you by what they see. That's a testimony and a testament. Praise God somebody. Praise God somebody. Matthew 7, 7, I ask. You receive, seek, you find, knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. So we see that one of the ways to pull down in concrete terms, right? What Abba Father has paid for and secured in the spirit, beloved, is by prayer. Kusakatiata. Prayer is a means of translation from the realm of the spirit to the concrete realm. Prayer. Prayer. So prayer unlocks the vaults of heaven. The treasures of heaven. It was said concerning Jesus. And Jesus having been baptized, praying, the heavens opened. Prayer is a key to unlock the heavens. I want to look very quickly at some principles that guarantees answered prayers. And with that better understanding, we'll not use prayer as something that is trial and error anymore. Will it work? Does it not work? Like a hit and a miss preposition. We can understand the dynamics and the workings of prayer and engage in them and see the results of answered prayers. Number one principle of answered prayer is the need for us to base our prayers listen primarily and in fact only <laughs> on God's word the word of God is the foundation and the premise of all prayers that will be answered because God's word reveals to us God's will God's word reveals to us God's will and God has so bound himself to his will for the Bible says he has exalted his word above all his names right so whilst God may want to do something you're asking for he's bound by his own word wow does that make sense? Okay, what I mean by that is this. You can be out of emotion and sensation, sensationalism, right? Out of panic, shouting, oh God, oh God, oh God, where are you? Sure, sure. And really, God has a compassion for you. But you see, if your prayer is counteracting the word, he will not act on your prayer. No matter how much pain you're going through, praise the Lord somebody. But, but when you understand his will, oh boy, can do sky. And you take his will to him, all of a sudden, everything changes around you. Because he responds to prayers that are his word. So when the word of God is known, the will of God is known. Praise the Lord. Hear this. 1 John 5, 14 says, And this is the confidence that we have in him. It's so a confidence and assurance. That if we ask anything, somebody say what? Anything. According to his will, we have a guarantee that what? He hears us. One step. And if we know that it, we, he hears us, whatsoever we ask. Ah, yeah, yeah. We know, we're not doubting, that we have the petitions that we desire of him. So when our prayers are not answered, I'm not sure the right thing to do is to keep on praying the way we're praying. 
we should pull back and ask ourselves am i praying the scripture am i praying his will am i praying his mind listen carefully please catch this true prayer please don't miss this true prayer does not begin from your heart don't miss this true prayer begins from the heart of the father so what prayer is is taking his word back to him praise lord somebody can you turn to isaiah 5 5 quickly oh hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord isaiah 5 5 thank you jesus verse number 10 for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there but water the earth and make it bring forth and board listen that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth right so from his mouth it goes forth right it shall not return to me void so the word goes forth to you by my stripes you are healed so you get the word and you return the word to him father you declared in the holy writ by your stripes i'm here that's a full circle it came from god to you you captured it you believed it you mix faith with his word then you return his word to him in prayer so the word and prayer are always struggling together somebody said a big amen so the most effective way to pray is simply take the Bible, know what God said, and tell God what he says. That's prayer at its best. Praise God somebody. Praise God somebody. That will take you the stress of, will he walk? Will he not walk? Let me try. Let me try. Hey, 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 hey. Glory to God. Glory to God. Remember our text? It says, if my words abide in you then you shall ask me what you desire and it will be granted you so the word of god is connected to effective prayer you know the bible says that the word of god is settled in heaven psalm 119 verse 89 right now that this word is forever settled in heaven wonderful but i haven't seen a scripture that says the word is settled on the earth no, it is the responsibility of believers to take the settled word in heaven, uh, establish it here, and settle it in their lives. So, beloved, I want to challenge you in the remaining days as we wait upon the Lord. Look at those areas of concern in your life, bugging questions. Why have I been here for so long? Why am I kept in a holding pattern? Why? Ask questions. Then ask the Lord to help you to go into the scriptures. Beloved, go on a search. Make discoveries of what God said concerning those particular aspects of your life that need attention. Then go to God well equipped, armed with the right scripture. Say, Lord, this is your word concerning this matter. I believe it is so in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that will turn for you as a testimony your amen sounds questionable amen. shout a big amen. amen so his words must abide in us abide means to take residency abode within us number two principle very quickly i race through the rest number two our prayers are to be directed to god the father god the father matthew 6 6 but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. When thou hast shut the door, pray to thy father who is in secret. And thy father who seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So prayer is something we do in the secret place, but there's a guarantee of a public reward. Praise God. We don't pray to be seen. We don't pray for sure. But we will pray in the secret and then God will reward us openly. So when you pray, pray thus, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come. Matthew 6 verse 9. So our prayers are to the Father, our Father, who art in heaven. Number two, very quickly. When we pray, we don't pray in our name. We pray in the name of Jesus. We don't pray for Christ's sake. Praise the Lord. Your prayer is not for the sake of Christ. It's for your sake. Yeah? You need the prayer. <laughs> Praise God. Say, for Christ's sake. <laughs> no. You pray in the name of Jesus. Now, what that means is that you are employing the delegated authority God gave you to use his name in his stead. Wow. It's like somebody authorizing you to sign his signature on the check. So when you make prayers based on the word, you say, Father, I believe I receive in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a seal. That prayer is as powerful as though it is Jesus offering the prayer to his father because we prayed in his name. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Praise God. Very important. Number three. We have to learn to constantly keep our lives free of sins. Because one of the hindrances to answered prayer is unconfessed sins. So a man's iniquity will keep him from God, from answered prayers. Not just that, if we're going to receive forgiveness from God, we must also be willing to forgive others as they have wrought wrong against us. We have this guarantee of repentance in 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. It's a guarantee. 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 Mark eleven twenty five, And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you for your trespasses. Number what? Four? Five? Pray in faith. Very, very important. Very, very important. Very, very important. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Track this. You believe. When do you believe? Uh, talk to me. When do you believe? When you pray, you believe. Right? But when do you receive them? Or when do you have them? It says, you see this. Therefore, I say to you, what things ever you desire. Something I still be downcast and morose. Hallelujah. So when you pray the prayer of faith, the thing that ought to happen is, Thanksgiving, Lord, I thank you. Wow, I agree. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And as you're thanking Him, this is the way it works. You believe you receive, then you will have them. So faith is key and critical. Number six, whatever number it is, learn to see, seven, seal your prayers with thanksgiving, as I mentioned earlier. Learn to seal your prayers with thanksgiving very very important and critical philippians 4 6 be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known on just to lift our voice in some particular prayer you have just experienced the preaching and teaching ministry of good heart obi equeme lead pastor of revival house of glory international church rajik and the apostolic leader of the Horn of Revival Ministry, HORM, a global outreach ministry mandated to carry the torch of revival across cities and nations. If you would like to ask a question, share your prayer request or testimony, or get more messages or books from Goodheart, please call or text 805 or email info at rogic.org. Also, download the Horn of Revival Ministry app on Google Play or Apple Store to connect with a variety of free quality resources including Rogic Radio and our refreshing daily devotions to take you higher in life. Keep hearing the Word of God. It will produce intimacy with His Spirit for uncommon encounters on the earth.